All right, so in this video, I'm gonna take you on a little journey with me whereby, not really a journey, but I'm gonna be building out this function generator kit, which I got off of Amazon. I paid $9.99 for it. Apparently, it's not a very good function generator, so I'm not expecting much. We'll test it out on the oscilloscope and have a look to see just how well this performs compared to my basic cheapo function generator. So this function generator cost me 20 pounds on eBay, and this one cost me 10 on Amazon, but I have to build it myself. now. The main reason I'm actually interested in doing this and I would advise anyone who's getting into electronics to do it is because firstly it's fun to build your own stuff and secondly you learn a bunch right. I want to get better at soldering and so I figured I would just buy as many kits as I can so I'm going to be building a power supply and a bunch of other stuff for you guys on this channel so if you haven't already subscribed this should be quite cool because I need a second function generator anyways and we'll be able to test out how this compares apparently according to the reviews it doesn't compare that well so a lot of the i mean it's not like terribly bad it's 4.1 out of 5 stars but a lot of the reviews show like these kind of sine waves or square waves that don't look great if you look at that that's a funny one but i think this person's probably just had an issue with clipping For example, I know that that happens if you put in too much voltage into it and the input voltage is actually 9 to 12 volts, I believe. Yeah, voltage supply input 9 to 12 volts DC. Okay, so um, let's get into building this thing. I've got my new little uh, clamp holder thing, which I'm going to use to hold the PCB in place. Which actually, funny enough, where is the PCB? Oh, there it is. In there. So we're going to put this in here like that. Okay, so hopefully we have instructions. And I'm not going to just wing it. Yes, we do. The way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to do the smaller components first. Unless it specifically has an actual... Unless it wants me to do it in a specific order. If not, I'm going to do the components that are smallest first. The welding installation considerations. Welding, I didn't know I was using a welder. The components are welding the front board from low to high principles. Yeah, okay, yeah. So I didn't know if that was a common place thing, so I didn't mention it, but in my first year of electrical engineering, I had to build a robot, and when we were soldering on the robot, our lecturer told us to solder in the smallest components first. The reason for that is because if you stick this knob on first, right, then for you to get access to that resistor with your soldering iron is going to be difficult. So you want to do the smaller components first. So do all the small ones first and then do the other ones after that. So this is following that same principle, which is good. So namely first low welding. So welding here is obviously tra a translation. It should be soldering, I assume. Components such as capacitor, resistor and diodes. Welding the IC socket, terminal blocks, finally power socket, adjustable potentiometer. The back with diagonal cut applies to cut short the pins, okay? And then that's debugging. So there's not really any proper instructions to it. So let's just get into it and you guys can laugh at me doing this. So let's do the resistor first. There's a few different resistors. Did they give us a resistor color chart? No. So I'm going to actually have to read. Okay, let's bring up our resistor color chart because I'm not going to have a clue what is what. Actually, what I'm going to do is instead of using the color codes, I just can't, I can't really be bothered to do it. So I'm going to use the multimeter instead. It's uh, easier to do. I mean, it might be easier for, it's easier for me. Some people might find it easier to read the codes. I get why we still have that color scheme, but I find it just completely pointless. Okay, so. I'm also going to be doing some SMD soldering practice on my, um, channel as well so okay I can't seem to bloody measure this thing here we go so this is a 1k resistor okay so the 1k resistor is R1 so we just need to find R1 over here R1's over there cool okay so I'm going to turn my fan on uh, I'm just going to start soldering so it's going to get audio is going to go to pot with the fan on so i've just got 0.3 millimeter uh lead 
solder so apparently i should be able to solder nice and easily with this uh, as you can see it's very very thin so this is probably the best one to use uh yeah i shall update you guys as i'm going along One thing I want to say is that uh, people say you should use flux and I've never really used flux at all. I don't even know how to use it. So, uh, yeah, my soldering might not go that well. I've just done one little bit there. So I've got some flux here. I believe what I need to do is just, if I'm correct, just dip this into here. I believe that's what I do. Although I don't, I don't know at all really. <laughs> all right, so that's my first attempt at my soldering job. Let's see if I can show you a better. Right, so I think that's all right, right? I mean, maybe it's a bit blobby. Maybe I could, um, I don't know, that looks worse. Yeah, okay. Let me just carry on and then I'll update you guys as I'm going along. Sorry if the audio is bad, it's from my fan. Okay, so I think I'm going to change from using the 0.3 millimeter solder, which is quite thin, to um, to this one here, which is uh, 0 0.8. So a bit, a bit thicker, but I feel like I'm using so much of the 0.3, so maybe the 0 0.8 will be better. I don't know, give it a go. I remember that, it's all coming back to me. So I've just put the second one in. I haven't soldered it in yet. But I was thinking, how am I supposed to hold it there? And I remember, you just fold the legs down like this, and then it stays there. That's so, that's just, yeah. It's just funny how, like, you know, it just kind of comes back to me, which is nice. Okay, so then now I can just solder that like that. Beautiful, let's give it a go. And I'm going to give it a go with the larger solder now as well. I've actually, just in case you're wondering, I've got my iron on 300, that seems quite high actually. I think it's 330 degrees, which seems too high. Let's go, or 350 degrees. I feel like 300 is enough now. We'll put it on 300. I think 300 is enough. Okay. So 300 degrees, 0 0.8 millimeter solder. Uh, dip it in some uh, flux. And then give it a go. That seems better. Seems easier. I was using less. It doesn't, yeah. I mean, I'm not really happy with either one of those, to be honest with you. But hopefully, it should be all good. All right, we need a. Uh, cutters i actually don't have my small cutters here so that needs to go on my shopping list of stuff that i need to get actually i need some cutters um i've got this but i don't think i don't know if i can can i use this no i don't know and then i've got these but probably not the best thing to use is it no it's not going to be flush and I've got these big ones which I, I don't really like Magnolson, they're really good, but not not really good for this, but let's uh I actually just can't even cut it cut it flush to be honest with you. It's just too big. And this is what um this is kinda like how I like to learn anyways. I like to learn like especially when it comes to building my lab. I like to learn by going, oh, duh, what do I need? And, you know, I actually watched a video today about what to buy in your lab. And even though the guy mentioned the cutters, I thought, well, I'll be fine. I've got cutters, but yeah, I need really sharp, thin ones. So I need to get that. All right, let me continue. So just to let you guys know what I'm doing. So 
I'm basically picking up resistors and then testing them. So I've tested, I've done the R1 and R4. So let me get a pen actually. So now I can just cross off R1, R4. So now I'm gonna do R3, R5 and R6. I might do R2 as well, which is adjustable resistance. But yeah, do R3, R5, R6. So I just, all I'm doing is just getting my multimeter and then just testing the resistors to make sure that these are the 500, 5.1K ones. So let's do that. Okay, anyway, so we'll do the, we'll do all the capacitors now. So we'll do the yellow ones first. So I was thinking to myself, obviously these are all gonna be the same value, but as you can see, they're clearly not 105, 104, 222, 473, 101. So I've gotta be careful basically where I'm putting each one. So 101, this one is C8. So we'll go with that first. So just be careful when you're doing the capacitors. So this kind of like helping hand tool thing, I'm not enjoying it as much as just the standard helping hands, um, just because it's a bit fiddly, especially when like, I've already got some components or some soldering already done over there. It's a bit hard to get in. Also, I've been cutting my solder with nail clippers, so good idea, standard nail clippers if you have them. Okay, so let's do our capacitor into our resin. Is it called resin or flux? Okay, I think that's enough. I don't think that's too bad, right? It's all right. The thing with me bending it, which I think is not a good idea, is that it ends up with this kind of like, it goes that way and then cutting it is going to be a bit of a problem. So just nail clippers. Like so. It's not, it's not looking the best. At all, but I think that's to be expected with um, with me at the helm of this. All right, I'll do the rest. Put all of the capacitors in there, even though they're not really ready to be soldered yet. But you know, it's a bit messy, right? You can see like this board thing. Okay, here, there we go. All right, I'm gonna try to solder them all at once, which. Might be messy. So when it comes to me inspecting my soldering joints, I never really know what to look for. Yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of going with just the do it and hope method. So now it's time for the capacitors and these are the electrolytic ones, which again, I'm not one side shaded to indicate positive or negative. And on the capacitor, this line, I believe says negative. That says negative. So I believe it goes positive end is the longer end and it goes in that way. That's what I think. But I'm going to have to check somehow. Either I can have a look on Amazon with the pictures to see which way the capacitor's done. Or I have to check online how to check polarity for a capacitor. Okay, so I don't know that I'm right, but uh, I checked online and someone said the same about the negative side being shaded. So I'm going to go with that. It appears like I need to put these uh, jumpers in. Now, how do I get it to stay on this little device of mine? I think I'm gonna have to use one hand to hold it, basically. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do this, to be honest. Maybe put solder on the tip and then come and solder a bit on here. Okay, so that worked. That's gonna stay. And now I can solder the rest. So I just held it down, basically, with one hand there and put some solder on the so this isn't taking me anywhere near as long as I thought it would. And that might be because I'm doing stuff wrong. I don't know. But part of the process, right? Like there a little bit, I'm in danger of a short between these two here. They're not touching, so it should be fine, but they're a bit close. Alright, so 
that's in there let's do this other one same way again so put some solder on my so that in there put some solder on the tip and then hold it like this and try and transfer a bit onto there okay and that's done it and i'm gonna need to fix that bit up because that bit's terrible but there we go And the headers are on. Sorted. So we're going to do the IC slot now. And then we do these large resistor things. They're all dials. Alright, so I've put the IC thing in. It's actually a bit wobbly, as you can see. Which isn't great. Um, I can't remember why, but I remember my lecturer saying not to put this in yet. Maybe it has to do with burning something out. I don't know. Or maybe it has to do with turning it on first without the IC being in there. But for whatever reason, I'm, I'm going to put the IC in last. Uh, I've got this uh, like output thing which uh, goes this way and I'm just guessing here but I think I'm right uh, jump the thing cap signal wise I don't know um, yeah I'm not sure but anyways I think I'm pretty sure this goes here so let's just we'll run with it for now that in there and then same again so it's a bit difficult for me to do it but just put one finger under grab the the soldering tip just touch the solder get some solder on it and then try and make some sort of bond yeah and then i can let go and i can actually use solder okay really important point i'm glad i spotted it uh, basically R2, R7 and R8 which are these uh, potentiometers they're different values so two of them are 50k and one of them is 100k so I've got to be aware of that and I've actually got uh, I believe I've got four but I can't see it right now maybe I've only got three but I need to check so there should be the value B104 this responds to 100k as you can see here so this is the 100k one which is R8 which needs to go over on the right here. So I'm glad I caught that because that's one of those mistakes that you make whilst doing this and you don't catch it. And then when it doesn't work, you're just like, ugh. And there's just no, at that point, it's impossible to troubleshoot it. So yeah, doing this kind of stuff is, is difficult. Another trick I remember actually that worked was blue tacking. So for example, if I blue tack these down, then I can solder these pin in, which, um, that actually worked so i'm going to try that let's use some blue tack so one of my lecturers didn't like this he didn't like it, the fact that i used blue tack but the teaching assistants they said to do it so i did it and i found it to be helpful so like now look that is holding in place and now i can solder on these pins so yeah that's a little trick that you can do as well it's all just kind of coming back to me as i'm doing it so Good, I suppose, right? Okay, now you can remove the blue tack off that bit. And then, how are you really going about soldering all of that? That seems like quite a lot of solder. Maybe I should use a larger one. Okay. Oh, well, no, that's not right. That was a lot of solder. That has worked. Have a look at that. That is a large, large amount of solder. Let's check the top here. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't look too bad from the top actually. Okay. So same again. Just gonna blue tack on these legs here. And there you go. So I've completely messed this up. Whereby, like, uh, basically, as you can see, like this one here. This one here is sticking out loads. This one's completely flat and this one's out a bit. So all of the knobs are all like, <laughs> look at that. That is a joke. So yeah, that's going to be, um, I couldn't really, I can't really get them out, uh, basically to fix them. And I'm not sure if it is, uh, it is my fault. Yeah. You can see the way they're soldered. Basically, maybe I might try and kind of like push, heat this one up. Let's try that. Let's try heat this one up and then push it forward. No, it's not going. 
I can't get it through. I mean, I've never used solar wick before, but maybe I could try that. Let's, um, so I'm not going to show you because it's YouTube, but my other hand right now is covered in blood because of the fact that I left my clippings of these, all of these things that you're cutting off. I left it on the floor. I got up to pick up my solder wick and then I stepped on it and pushed it through my foot and uh, had a bunch of blood pour out of my foot. So yeah, so it hurt and uh, I would advise What's funny is that when I was soldering at university, I had my shoes, my trainers on, right? So this didn't never happen. But working on carpet with my feet out, I actually had socks on as well. But yeah, not the best idea. So pick up your little clippings. <laughs> it hurts. It's also why you keep um, wipes and a first aid kit nearby. Oh, my foot, man. Okay, so back to the task in hand. I've got some solder wick and I've also got one of these uh, pulley things which uh, you basically press it down like that and then press it to suck it up. So maybe I'll try this pulley thing first because I used this before. Um, and if this, if, this, if this doesn't work then I'll try the wick because I've never used the wick before. So Okay, so you solder. Oh, it did it. <laughs> That's genius. Completely made a hole in there. That's cool. I didn't think that was going to work. All right, so same again then. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's actually working. This is brilliant. All right, and then look at that. I did it. Oh, I'm so glad I did that. that was, that's a good learning experience. All right, so the it's still not going to fall because of all this solder that I've got on these legs but maybe I can heat up these legs and then just push it maybe no I'd have to heat up, heat up them both at the same time which the solder is gonna dry okay so same again I think all right so before I turn it on I want you to be honest and uh, <laughs> leave a leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of my soldering job right so are you ready just like rank it out of <laughs> i mean me laughing probably might lower your score even more but rank it out of 10 like All right, so be honest, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think, and I shall tell you what I think of it. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. What I would say is that, you know, and that's a 4 out of 10 on the condition that it works, right? This here, the DC barrel was my worst, probably. Obviously, I messed up these things as well, but the D <laughs> look at the DC barrel over there. That is terrible. But, yeah, so, I mean, 4 out of 10 is like, you know, if you had a 4 out of 10 car... It would drive, i.e. get you from A to B. Look at that, that's horrible. It'd get you from A to B, right? But it wouldn't. you wouldn't feel good doing it and the AC wouldn't work. You know, half the speakers in the car are broken. So, yeah, hopefully this works fine. Let's plug it in now and give it a go. So we need, I just realized we need a 12-volt uh, barrel input, which is, uh, I hate these barrel input things. I might not even have the correct input for that. But yeah, let's see if I can and then turn it on. All right, so I remember now why you don't plug in the IC. I think the reason being is because when you connect in your uh, DC supply, then you might actually blow something up. And so you don't want to kill your chip at the same time because then you don't have that many chips. I think that was the reason why. So I'm going to plug it in. Hopefully no explosions. I'm wearing glasses just in case anyway. So let's plug this in. Okay. Now, I've got no idea how to know if this is on or off. There's a jumper cable, a jumper thing here. There's a triangle and sine wave here. Okay, so it seems like, so these are the outputs, right? Let's read, just check the instructions. But the good thing is that I'm putting 12 volts in there and it hasn't blown up. So, uh, Pay attention to the direction of the IC, insert the, my, all right, the instructions of this are terrible. 
Insert the might damage the chip. Okay. Check the IC weather against such an anti-police timely correction. <laughs> Insert the pass by, uh, pass by for 5.5 .5 times 2.1 port. Center positive barrel uh, 9 to 12 volts. Supply more than 12 volts. Okay, if you supply more than 12 volts, the output waveform is unstable. Um, jumper cable plug-in. SN, SIN TR. Oh, that's here. Blue terminals, so this is talking about these terminals here. Um, no, J1, J2 can only insert. All right, well, let's try and just turn these. All right, I can hear like a ringing. I don't know which way of these is up or down. I'm, I'm not, or zero or higher, I don't know. Uh, jumper, jumper one, cap plug-in, blue terminals, jumper two, Cap. I mean, these instructions are basically completely unused. You, like, you, you can't read them. SIM blue terminals output triangular wave. Anyways, all right. Let's in, let's insert the IC because nothing's blowing up now. So, I'll unplug it. And then I'll insert this IC. Okay. So that's in. So let's now connect this again. I'll put this onto a sine wave. I don't know what these jumper cables in the middle do. Hopefully no explosion. Okay, so that's done now. One thing I'm looking at is over here on the Amazon picture, you can see they've got this jumper cable on in the middle. Ah, okay, it has to do with the case. On the case there, you can see that it's got these six, 65 kilohertz, one megahertz, three kilohertz. So that's what that's for. Okay, makes sense. So you move the jumper cable like that. All right, got it. So let's, um, I, I completely forgot about the case. Let's install this uh, case then. Look at this case here. Actually a bit, a bit bummed out. So the case is this like carbody, car, carbody, car, cardboard looking thing. But on the actual uh, advert itself, they displayed a clear case. So they sent me some rubbish cardboard one. Although here in the ad or here it does say that it's cardboard, but in the actual thing here, see through, which I would have much preferred a see through one, but whatever. All right, so just looks like a bunch of pieces, should be fairly simple to do it. This case really is like just <laughs> it's a joke really so you've got like the writing here as you can see but it's um it's backwards basically like it should be like that and the case goes on like that right so that's how the case goes on but you now can't see the writing the writing's on on, on the underneath you know and so but it's written backwards in a way that you're supposed to be able to see it on this side. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened there at all, really. Um, I'm not sure how this affects things. Possibly I just need to write it on myself, basically. But yeah, it's just weird. Super weird. Okay, well, we've got some screws here. So let's... I uh, don't know why they've given us quite a few screws. Oh, okay, that's these screws are to screw the board down into there. Okay, so let's remove these walls and we can screw into there. Okay, so you've got the screws that go into here. Obviously, here. So, this is quite cool. Basically, instead of having like bolts that you screw into, you basically screw these screws into this like hexagon, whatever the shape it is. And then it just kind of sticks in there nicely. So that's quite cool. All right, so at this point I'm really struggling. So I've connected in these uh, wires to hopefully try and connect something to the oscilloscope. Well, I've got this SQU output here. Uh, I've got uh, sine wave and triangle, SQU and ground. I've got no idea what I'm doing with it. Looking at this, it just says SQU Blue terminals output pulse. Um, 
Yeah, just means nothing to me. I don't get it at all. So I decided to give it a go and thankfully it is working. So I'm not sure what the second output pin is for, but I've just connected, obviously just grounded, etc. And so let's uh, raise this up so you can see it better. We go measure. So right now we've got 100 kilohertz. So it seems like, let's see what the max we can go to is. Nice. Oh, wow. That is surprising. How is this thing at 1.2 megahertz? That's crazy. All right? Tell me I'm wrong. That's mad, right? That this little thing can do 1.2 megahertz. So I've got this on the highest pin up here, 1.2 megahertz. This is nice, man. This is a little this is a decent little thing. So if I take it off this pin now and move it down to the bottom, right? Then what do we get? No, we really got anything. Okay, it's not giving me anything right now. All right, so on the lowest setting, so this is obviously, uh, let's um, firstly bring up. Okay, so we're at 19 hertz right now on the bottom here. And what's the what's the lowest we can go? Oh, yeah, no, I'm changing. This is the amplitude. Okay, so this is the amplitude, and then this is for me to change the frequency. So here we go. So if I turn the frequency all the way down, what do we get? I realized you can't see what I was doing, apologies. So I'm struggling to figure out what I'm doing here. But that probably has more to do with um, my ignorance of just general uh, function generators and oscilloscopes. Alright, so this is the best I can do. So I've got it on the lowest uh, frequency possible. So this is on apparently, you know, less than one hertz. One six hundred millihertz, which is crazy low, right? So this is the amplitude. So we're getting apparently a peak to peak voltage of eighty two volts. How's that possible? How can this thing? I'm only putting twelve volts in. How is it? Okay, so I don't really understand what's going on here. But anyways, if I just put it onto what I'm normally going to operate it at, probably around the kilohertz range, right? So here you've got. All right, so here we've got one hundred and sixty hertz. So this max peak to peak voltage is high, 82 volts. I realized I had my one times attenuator on, so I needed to turn it on to 10 times. That's what I've got in the settings here. So now it's actually accurate. No, it wasn't 80 volts. Okay, so now we've got 1.2 volts peak to peak, 2.4 volts peak to peak. There we go. Okay, got it. I see why it's going wrong. All right, then now i turn the frequency up. To oh, here we go. Wow. Okay. So this one must be the the coarse one, and this must be the fine one. So I want to try to get to one kilohertz. So this thing would this thing would do the job, right? In you know, kind <laughs> kind of, but it's finicky. You can see it's jumping around a fair bit. Let me just put it down. See if um. It's a bit triangular, the, the sine wave, isn't it? Okay, so let's see what the voltage is here. So what we've we've got, you know, eight volts peak to peak, which makes sense. And we can go down to, okay, less than one volt, seven hundred twenty millivolts. So adjusting the voltage is quite difficult. Let's go to five volts. Okay, get down. Ah, okay. That's about so 4.96, 5.04 volts. All right, then, so now we're at one kilohertz. Let's, can I get it down to 500? Okay, so yeah, so that's usable. So I would use it, I assume, for, you know, 500 hertz, 1,000 uh, hertz, 50 hertz, you know, maybe like 5 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz. So 
let's just see if I just keep these settings the same and then just move across the jumper pins to see what happens with the hurt. So we're at 500 now. Go up one jumper pin once. And now we're at 10 kilohertz. So one jumper pin went from 500 hertz to 10 kilohertz, right? And then got up one jumper pin. And you can see, look, the frequency has increased big time. 200, 166 to 166 kilohertz. Madness. So um, what's the max hertz we can go to? Two hundred and fifty, looks like. Is that the max? Okay, I can reduce it from here. Uh, it doesn't seem to want to settle. So it's at one hundred and sixty-six now. Increase it. Two hundred and fifty. It's jumping around a lot. Decrease this down. 83 yeah how do i feel about this i'm glad i got to build it myself that was a lot of fun i'm glad that i have at least you know some kind of basic oh interesting what happens when i just release this it just goes to max oh wait what's happening there That does not look right. Adjust the amplitude. No. Okay. Well, I don't know what's happening there and why that waveform looks like that. I'm not sure what, what happens on the lower frequency. It seems to cause an issue. Perhaps there's like a minimum that you need. Let's put it onto the second up. Yeah, look, it's fine there. Yeah, so, you, okay, so the second one up. It's still only on 13 hertz, so maybe it's my time to turn the attenuator, I'm not sure. Can I get it down to 1 hertz? Mm, yeah, I should be able to. No. Okay, I can't. So on the second level, I can't get it below 8, eight hertz. And um, how high can I go? Quite high, 200 hertz, okay. Let's go down one. Ah, nice. Okay, so it's quite good. It seems to have it in fairly decent levels. So the second level started at 18, and this is the max of the first level, which tops out at 19 hertz. So can I bring it down to 1 hertz? Yes, I can. All right, and then my, my either the oscilloscope or this, I don't know, something is not happy. Can we going down this low. Yeah, so I can't uh, read it. So it seems that when I get it down to, so we're at five hertz, and then so below kind of like four hertz, it kind of just, my oscilloscope just goes off basically. I'm not sure why that happens. Again, I don't know enough about this stuff uh, really. Yeah, I mean, overall, I enjoyed this. This is cool. I'm, I'm happy that this works. I'm happy that, you know, it actually produces a real signal. I'm happy that my dodgy soldering has actually worked out well for me and I've actually got um, some sort of frequency generator which is cool. Not sure why it's fluctuating around like as much as it does there. I don't know, but yeah, would I recommend this to you? 100%, you know, 10 pound. It's a nice tiny little thing as well. I like the fact that it's this small because then obviously I can easily store it away, no problems, which is nice. Nice little bit of kit, man. I'm very happy with this. Uh, I don't like this output. I mean, I assume you could change the output, I suppose. Like this now. I'm, am I going to store it like this? Probably, maybe. Maybe tuck this away. Yeah, I don't know. The output's a bit uh, dodgy like that. But, I mean, obviously, I need the, I could do the markings. But it's not going to take long for me to move between different... Uh, move the pin up and down, right? So I'm trying to think about how I feel about this. I would say that I love the idea. The product is okay. You know, I definitely like, especially when I think about these kind of things is only two people are going to buy this. One, you want to practice your soldering skills like me. You want to get better at soldering. 
and you like making stuff. One type of person. If you're that type of person, 100% buy this. You know, it's £10 on Amazon, on Banggood or, you know, AliExpress or eBay. You're probably able to get this for five, six, seven pounds. That's crazy, you know. It's five pounds for a kit you get to play around with and you have something that works at the end of it that you can actually functionally use. You know, brilliant. So that's if you're that type of person that you want to learn, get better, buy it. If you're the other type of person that needs a function generator, then I would say go with this. It's just much easier to use. You know, you got a display. Uh, I've had no problems with this. I've used it many times. It's been perfect. So I'd go with this. This is, you know, anywhere between 16 and 23 pounds online. Um, I think I've seen it like even 13, 14 on AliExpress. So go with this FG100 DDS. Very, very good function generator. On my review of the oscilloscope, I actually used it. So you can see that video. Uh, I'll link it. However, you know, if you're if you are really on a budget and you just need a function generator, you know, yeah, then yeah, you can buy this. This is probably doable. I can see myself using this more, I'd say. Yeah, I think I can. I can envision myself using this. So for whatever it costs, you know, five to ten pounds, go for it. I'm happy with it. Hi right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. And yeah, like I said, I'm going to be building a lot more of these kind of kits. I've ordered a bunch from uh, AliExpress and from Banggood, about 20, 30 different kits. So when I get time, I'm going to practice my soldiering skills, get used to dealing with components, really get, you know, hands on with the practical stuff. So if you're into that kind of stuff, subscribe and I'll see you guys around. Peace.